What's going on everybody? This is number 8 Axel. I'll come back with a, another video. Uh, this is the third part of my um, ARC server settings uh, video showing you how to use um, Nitrado to set up a PlayStation 4 ARC server. Uh, last episodes we covered um, your, what are just called basic settings. Um, everything on this page we got down to the Unreal 4 engine settings. Now, this stuff um, I mentioned uh, or get to in this video, and that's because we have to go to what's known as the engine settings for this video. And we're going to be covering engine settings. So, um, over here on the settings, you're going to, you know, we're currently in general. There's configuration profiles and cross arc. That'll be covered in a separate video. So, we're going to go to engine settings. Here we go. So, this is your engine settings page. I know, it, it's a lot shorter, but this stuff is a lot more um, complex. So, your settings are dino spawn weight. This is makes it so that, say you have a dino that you want to have more of on a map. You're going to go to create new setting. You're going to select the dino. Anki is Ankylosaurus. A couple of these have, you know, short named OV, I believe, or Ovises. So let's go with um, Trudons, because everybody loves Trudons. Um, currently the default is between 20 and 30, means you can only, you can have about 20 to 30 of one on the, on it. Um, so let's go ahead and set it to 45, meaning there will be 45 times as many by, than the 20 to 30, that's the default value. Um, overwrite spawn limit allows you to overwrite, um, the default one. Um spawn limit here. So this would be if you want to use this limit over whatever the game's default what is. So you then hit save changes. It will then add a line here so it'll say what dino is it? What's the new multiplier? Are you going to allow override the default one? And then the percentage that would be overridden if this was set to true. And grand entries. This one's another one. So Go to create new setting. This would be where you can make it so that you can disable engrams so or alter how much they cost. When this says XP, that's actually how many engram points it takes. So um, tech ones are always going to be uh, zero because you unlock those as you ascend and do boss fights. We're going to use, let's see, the Tech ATV, for example, and that's why they say level 0 as well. Um, certain um, engrams, um, except for Tech, all have a certain level requirement. All Tech are 0, reason being, again, you unlock them through boss fights. So, you go ahead and select this. This is just the actual engram number. Don't play with this. It'll automatically be filled in. You check this. Now, you cannot um, learn the Tapajar Tech Saddle Engram. If you want to make it so that um, there's a certain number of um, Engram points for it, you can make it where it's actually going to cost points. Level requirement, um, what level is unlocked at. If you set this to 1, at level 1 you'll automatically unlock um, the Engram. Then this, if it requires other Engrams, um, you'll know this by the, the game will tell you. Check it. Otherwise, you might get in, run into some issues. You hit save changes. It is now no longer learnable. Um, reason I said not to mess with that number is when you select that uh, engram, it automatically pulls up the engram index number, which for the te uh, type of jar textile is 470. Engram entries. This one um, is basically it's the same one as this. Um, except it will just pull by the name. It doesn't matter which one you use. Level experience ramp overrides. Okay, this allows you, if you want to make it so that certain levels require lower number of experience, you can do that. Now, you will have to do it so that it's done by level. So, level 1. If we want 100 experience points, you will now require 100 experience points for level 1. And you can do it for dinos and for players. And you can do this up to as many levels as you want. 
Per level stat multiplier. Okay, this is another one. That takes some explaining. Again, so this one, you have a few options. Player, wild dino, tame dino, add dino, affinity dino. Now, the affinity is for if you, um, what stats are edited once you hit max imprinting on them. Add dino. Um, so when you level a dino up that's tamed and you hit the add button next to a stat, how much uh, more would they get over the default or how much less? Dino tamed. If you want to make it so that when you tame a dino, they get double stats, you could make it so that happens. Wild dino. This affects um, uh, wild dinos. So um, you can, this is also used like on gigas where you lose stats once you tame them. You could set it so that that doesn't happen by using the tame dino and doing whatever um, multiplier they use. Player, this would be how much a uh, player gets. So then you can select a couple options. Health, stamina, torpidity, oxygen, food, water, temperature, weight, melee damage, speed, temperature fortitude, and crafting speed. So... Temperature fortitude is shown as fortitude. Temperature is a hidden value. I'm not sure how that one um, affects, but raising it does, um, I believe, has to uh, is coinciding with temperature fortitude when you put points in the fortitude. Um, it increases your damage resistance as well as your resistance to ambient temperatures such as heat and cold. So increasing this, I believe, only affects that temperature section. So if I set this to 5, with this to 1, I get 1 time on the physical resistance, so damage, but 5 times for the cold and heat. Health increases health, obviously. Crafting speed, speed. All these have their own in-game values. Um, weight, I think it's like 10 per. And 1.0 would mean just arcs default. Let's set it to, I don't know, that. And now 1 point of weight gives me a crazy amount of weight. Go ahead and save changes. It'll save your uh, change, and it'll bring you back to engine settings. Every time it's successful, as you see, you get this little, this action was successful. Uh, per level engram points. This will make it so that you can increase the amount of points you get per level. Bear in mind, if you do this, you will have to go from level 1 all the way up. So you cannot go, you know, just say, well, level 30, I don't get enough, so I just want to do level 30. No. You have to go from level 1 up. So that one is very laborious and it will take time. Uh -huh, let's see where Here we go. Class damage multipliers. So this would allow certain dinos that are not tamed to deal more damage. Tame dino mul damage multiplier. This allows you to deal more damage for specific types of tame dinos. So this would be exclusive to like Rexes. Or gigas. This is the same thing for resistance. This one only does for tame, though, not wild. Exclude item indices. This is um, unclear on what this does, so I'd leave this alone. Resource harvest multiplier. This is a good one. Um, so you can select by different um, items. Bear in mind, this only works for natural items like chitin, crystal, fiber, flint. Anything that's crafted like gasoline, it does not like to work for. So let's go with, um, I don't know, a seeds. You can make it so you get you know twice as many seeds when you have a certain type, or twice as many berries, twice as much prime meat, raw meat, all of that, um, whenever you're harvesting. Go ahead and hit save. I now get twice as many uh, narco seats. All right, custom game I nice settings. So, th there are certain custom settings that aren't shown here. Um, if you ever go to uh, expert mode, which it'll be another video that I'll briefly touch on expert mode. Expert mode takes a lot of explanation, as does this. Certain things you can do here will allow you to edit various other things. Um, That'll get its own video. So next we're going to go and cover what cross arc is. So if you have multiple servers, cross arc something you're going to want to turn on. So you, and when you enable cross arc, this now allows you to transfer from server A to server B. 
you're going to want to generate a cluster ID. This will generate a random cluster ID. This is important because if you do not have one, if somebody else has a CrossArc server enabled, they might be able to download their character. For the cluster ID, it will isolate the server so that you can only go from cluster ID to identical cluster ID. So, um, let's just for I'm going to use a small number for example. Let's say it's cluster ID one, and I have another server that's ID one. Let's say so now this island and let's say that server is Rag. I can now transfer my character, my dinos, my inventory from this from the island to that Ragnarok server. Now when you do this. Your servers cannot have identical names. So let's say your server's name is YouTube. Well, if they're both in YouTube, you can't uh, use that. You'll not be able to transfer. So my recommendation is I call YouTube Island, YouTube Rag. This way people know this one is on the island, this is one is on Rag, but they're clustered. So I can transfer between the two whenever I want. The restrictions. Um, if you want to make it so maybe you can't send your survivor, I honestly would not enable this. Um, item download, meaning um, for a survivor to transfer, they have to drop all their items. Dinos, whether you want to allow dinos to be um, download onto the server. Survivor upload, meaning if this is enabled, I cannot upload a survivor, meaning I can't go to an obelisk and change servers with it. If uh, this would be whether I can bring another character onto the server. So if you're going to have uploading and downloading, I would. If you're not going to have it, just check both. Prevent item upload. Again, this would be whether or not I want to allow them to upload items. Um, disable downloading player information. This would make it so that you can't download characters from remote servers. A lot of foreign items. This is only for aberration. If you are running an aberration server and you check this, you can have dinosaurs that are normally not allowed on aberration on aberration, such as flyers. So you just go ahead and hit save changes. Um, so configuration profiles. Uh, if you go here, this is where you're going to find. Um, you can save certain uh, configurations such as you maybe you want to have a PvP one or you just want to save your settings before you make a big change so we're just going to put test down here hit create so now if I ever need to um, come back if I hit show it'll just kind of give me all of this information and there's a lot to it obviously um, and you can hit restore, it'll restore that configuration profile. So you'll have all those settings restored, regardless of what happens to the server. Now this only restores the settings, it will not restore your game world. If, you, if that's something you need to do, um, you're going to be going to restore a backup. So this is where all your backups are going to be stored. So there are three kinds. Map save. So this is if you need to roll your map back, you'd select when, uh, whichever one. It'll give you the date and time it was created, as well as the file size. You just hit restore. And it'll tell you, you know, you have to restart in order to do it. You'd hit restart now, restart later, meaning next time the server restarts, it'll um, bring that backup up. Server backups. This is for the game uh, server. So any um, settings, all of that, this would be that kind of backup. S MySQL database. Um, this, I believe, has to do with, with character management. Um, you cannot use a MySQL on PS4. They do not allow it. So don't worry about database backups. Um, automated tasks. This is a, um, very restrictive on what you can do. Um, if you want to make it so you have a you know restart maybe every day, you can create that here. Um, maybe once every week it's you know I this one was there when I bought it so I don't know what it's for um, official import this would import official server settings onto your server so if you select this it'll bring you to a page and it'll let you import um, the settings um, from a specific server um, onto your server
Now, these are old. These have not been updated since the 24th of August, three years ago. Uh, player control. Um, this is going to be blank for me, obviously, because nobody's been on the server yet. So this would be if someone's causing issues and you know who they are, you can ma um, ban them remotely. Or if you're watching a player, you can um, ban them remotely. Or you can whitelist them. Whitelisting doesn't work on PS4, though. So that's all of your basic settings um, from these four videos. Um, if you go to help, it'll bring up your um, basically help articles. Uh, let's see. Upgrade, downgrade. We kind of covered this in the first video. This would be where you go to... Um, you can switch the service to a different kind of uh, server. You can upgrade, downgrade, all of that. So that's going to kind of be it for this one. The next one we're going to be covering um, what happens when you decide to use expert settings. Um, so that's going to be a whole nother... Uh, video because again expert settings takes a lot to discuss um, I personally have been using expert settings so you know I will catch you guys on that video